Lisa here with a tutorial on how to make a panosphere or tiny planet in Photoshop. So let's get started. Alright, before I get into editing on this photo, there's a few things you want to keep in mind when making a panosphere. The first thing being that you need to choose an image that is at least twice as wide as it is tall. Really, the wider the photo, the better. You can either use a true panorama or you can crop a single image to get the right dimensions, which is what I've done with this photo. Next, you want to make sure that your horizon is perfectly level, otherwise your sphere will not match up properly. So I'm just going to grab a ruler real quick and check my horizon line here. And that looks like I'm pretty good there. Next, you want to make sure that you've got some uncluttered foreground and you want it to go about 25% up the, from the bottom of your image. This is going to be the part of your image that is the inner part of your sphere and it's going to be the most distorted so you want to make it uncluttered. And then lastly your, your goal is to make sure that your left and your right hand sides match up as closely as possible. So I can see with this image I'm going to have a few issues with my left side and my right side matching up. My left side is a little bit darker than my right side and I have a piece of Catalina Island sticking out on the right. So I'm going to make a few edits to this photo to get it ready to make it into my little tiny planet. So I'm going to go over here and grab my marquee tool and I'm going to copy a piece of the left hand side of my photo. Alright, hello, take it. So I'm going to copy that as a new layer. And then I'm going to flip this horizontally by going to transform and then flip horizontal. Then I will grab my move tool and pull that over to the right hand side. All right. And I'm going to flatten my layer. So now I've got the left hand side and the right hand side matching up, but I have this funny line here from where I did my copy. So I'm going to grab a, my lasso tool and I'm going to make a quick selection of that area. And then I'm going to go to fill and use content aware and see if content aware fill can make that better for me. Do, 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 do. <laughs> All right, so it did a pretty decent job of that. We'll deselect. And I might take my spot healing brush and kind of just go over that area just to make sure. But otherwise, I think it's pretty good. I won't worry about it too much for the purposes of this demonstration. So now we can go ahead and make our planet. The first thing you want to do is resize your image. We're going to turn this into a square. So I'm going to go to image, image size, and then I'm going to make my height equal to my width. So you want to make sure when you do this that you do not have the constraint aspect ratio clicked on. So if that's clicked on, you want to make sure it's off. So I'm just going to go in here and enter in 13.442 and click OK. So now I've got this distorted square. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to image and we're going to rotate this by going to image rotation and rotating it 180 degrees. So we're going to flip it upside down. Once we've done that we are ready to spherize. So go to filter, distort, and then polar coordinates. Now if you go to distort and polar coordinates and polar coordinates is grayed out, you may have to go up to your image mode and change 
um, your your bit channel here. So I've had a couple of problems with uh, with these. Sometimes it doesn't like to do it in 16 bits, so then I would change it to 8. But um, just a quick tip because I know I've had a couple people um, have that issue. So anyway, we're going to go back to Distort, Polar Coordinates, and click OK. You will get this dialog box, and then you want to make sure that Rectangular to Polar is clicked on, and then just OK. And there we have our tiny planet. We can go back to Image, Rotation, and flip it back around right side up. And it looks like I kind of missed the mark a little bit with my copy, so I'm going to grab my spot healing brush and just take it down that center line right there. And that's all cleaned up. So we're ready to go with this. If you wanted to make any other edits, you can. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next image. So this photo is not going to be so easy. As you can see, the left hand side of my photo is quite a bit darker than the right hand side and I don't have anything that matches up. So I'm going to have to get just a little bit creative with this one. Now if you have a photo with buildings in it and you have a building on either side that are about the same height, that will work close enough to match. But unfortunately I don't have that option with this one. so. Uh, here we go, making it happen. So I'm going to start by pulling a ruler line down and just getting it right at the base of that right hand building. And that's just for reference for myself. I'm going to take my rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to make a copy of a, just about half of that building and I'm going to copy that to a new layer. I'm then going to hold my shift key down as I move that over to the left hand side of my image. In this case we don't need to flip it. So we're just going to move it and we're going to make believe that that building was right there next to that tall building on the left. I'm then going to hit reveal all because I've got that kind of hanging off. And we're going to need to do some cropping here. So we're going to crop the left hand side back to where it was originally. And on the right hand side I'm going to crop into where the building piece that we moved would have been. So I think right about there is the piece that we used on the left. So we're going to crop that piece off on the right and click OK. So now I've got this building over here and it wraps around to the left hand side. Now I still am going to have an issue with the sky but we'll deal with that after the fact. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this ruler line and we'll go ahead and make our pano or our sphere. So I want to first flatten my image and then we'll go back to image size and we'll make our square. Once again, making sure that you're not constraining your width and your height. We're going to make our height 22.506 inches and click OK. OK, so we are ready to rotate image rotation 180 degrees. And then we'll go to Distort, Polar Coordinates, Rectangular to Polar again, and then click OK. Alright, and there we have it. And you can see that my building came out just fine right there. But we'd have to deal with this line and also the difference in tone on this side of the photo. 
But first I'm going to go ahead and rotate this back and I think I want to go about 90 degrees counterclockwise and put the tallest building right up at the top. Once we've done that, I can take my lasso tool again and see how it does with this line that we've got going here. We'll go back to Fill and Content to Wear and click OK. Okay, so it didn't do too bad of a job. We'll go ahead and deselect that and we'll go to the spot healing brush and see what we can do there. Maybe a little bit here. Kind of try to clean this up, kind of blend it together just a little bit. Oop. All right, and, and you can play with that um, if you've got a case like this. I'm not going to go too far into it just for the sake of time. But once I've got that pretty well blended, what I would do then is go in and do a curves adjustment and bring down the brightness on the photo and then I'm going to control I to invert and then I'm going to grab a soft paintbrush and make sure my opacity is up on that and then I'm going to start blending in some darker exposure on that bottom half of the photo And then maybe around here, I'll take this opacity back down to like 75% or so and try to blend that in a little bit more. Maybe blend it in a little bit more here. And then I can also take the mask and do a Gaussian blur on it so that blurs so that it blends in a little bit more as well. And again, for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm not going to get it perfect, but you can kind of see what you're going to have to um, do. You're going to have to get a little bit uh, creative and just kind of try to work it and work it until you get it all to a place where it blends nicely. So that didn't do a bad job. So it's a little bit more even, um, probably a little bit more work on, on where the seam is. So let's go ahead and flatten the image I do really like these kind of cityscape ones though because it's really cool to kind of see the inside of this you know if you've got some nice reflections or something cool in the water then you get this cool little thing happening inside this inside the sphere as well as outside the sphere. And then just one other thing that I'm going to show you on this, and I'm just going to take this back a few more steps. So what happens if you don't flip upside down? And this is really cool because on certain images it just makes it makes a whole new thing. So you can do one one way and then do a whole other sphere going the other way. So basically with this one, if you don't flip it, what you're going to get is your city on the inside of the circle. So if we go to Stort, Polar Coordinates without flipping it 181st, still going rectangular to Polar, then you get your city on the inside, which is really cool too. So. Um, the thing about with these kinds of photos is just to have a whole lot of fun with it. It's, it's fun to experiment and see what different things come out looking like and just get really creative. All right, so we're going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and finish up with this photo and we'll go on to one more quick example and then we'll wrap everything up. 
Okay, so with this photo, there's really no way to make the left side and the right side match up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my layer, and then I'm going to flip this layer horizontally. So I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and Flip Horizontal. So now I have mirror images of the photo. I'm going to take my Move tool, and with the Shift key held down, I'm going to drag it over to the left until it matches up with the first layer. I can then go to Image and Reveal All to get the entire image on the screen. Now it looks like I do have a little bit of a gap where it didn't exactly match up, so I'm just going to grab my Move tool and using my right arrow key, I'm going to nudge that over just a tiny bit. I can then go to Image, Trim, and get rid of my transparent pixels. I'm going to go ahead and flatten my image. And it looks like I have a little bit of a seam line going here. So I'm going to grab a small healing brush and just clear that away. Okay. So now we've got a clean sky, both of our ends are going to match up. We can go ahead and do our tiny planet. So once again, I'm going to go to Image, Image Size, and I'm going to change my height to match my width. Wow, that's one funky looking square. I'm going to go to Image Rotation, rotate at 180 degrees, and then Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates. Once again, Rectangular to Polar clicked on, click OK. And then I'm going to rotate this back 180 degrees. And we've got a cute little Santa Monica Pier Mickey Mouse. I hope you found this useful, and I hope you have a great time playing with tiny planets. Thank you for watching. See you next time.